Reynolds. Our next guest has seen many of them. He was the subject of a recent ESPN 30 for 30. He's a boxing legend, a Hall of Famer, an Olympic champion, a world champion several times over. And I'm talking about the great Sugar Ray Leonard, who joins the show. Ray, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time today, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing fine, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's get right into it, Ray, man. We can be, of course, uh, want to talk to you about so many different things. But, of course, uh, it, it's such an honor to have you here. But we definitely want to talk to you about your early years, your upbringing, kind of uh, when you first noticed, man, that you were pretty good at this boxing thing. <laughs> you know, it's even to this day, especially with my wife, who she can't believe that I was a fighter at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> uh, but I was, as a kid, I was very um, introverted, extremely shy. But I was always getting beat up by my big brother, Roger. And one day he asked me to come down to the boxing gym, and I said, no way. And I actually followed him down there. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I put those gloves on, and for that moment, I found boxing. Boxing found me, or we found each other. From then on out, it was... You know, all uphill. I, I trained. I did. I did a little bit more than everyone else. I ran a little bit further than anyone else, and I, I, I was so distant at that age that boxing, it, it, it saved my life along with giving me what I have today. Right, and, and and you know, all of us, a lot of us boxing enthusiasts, remember you as the darling of the '76 Olympics in Montreal. Uh, I remember those games fondly. Yourself and Howard Davis Jr. and all the other guys. What was one of uh, the more memorable occurrences for you uh, that you would take with you for the rest of your life back from uh, those Montreal experiences? When Howard Davis's mom passed away, and he was naturally devastated, emotionally drained, just lost. And, and, I, and, I, and I, I just watched him because all of a sudden this guy who, who without question was going to be a gold medal winner, was facing something even more important, his mom, the mm -hmm. passing of his mom. And he was going home. He was telling me, I'm leaving. i got to go, i got to go, i got to go. And we said to him, the whole team said, Howard, your mother, your mother would want you to win that gold medal. You know, she would be so proud of you to win that gold medal. And you know what? We convinced him to stay. He won the gold medal, then went back home happy and, and proud and Thoughts of his mom. Wow. It was a beautiful thing, man. I, I could never forget that. How motivational. I'm sure it brought all of you guys together on that whole entire Olympic team. As a matter of fact, overall, the whole team uh, was rather memorable and very successful, wasn't they? We were a team. Mm -hmm. We were a family. We trained so hard up in Burlington, Vermont. And from Leon to, to Michael Spinks, I mean, we had Chuck Taylor. We had all these guys. We had such an incredible team of boxers, of men, young men, I should say. And we stuck together. We cheered each other on. It was a beautiful thing. It's one of my most uh, cherished moments, I should say. Yes, definitely. Uh, Sugar Ray, talk about the uh, great bodies that were in the game when you turned pro. I mean, obviously you had the charisma. Everybody loved you fresh off of the Olympics. You get into the fight, the pro game, and, of course, uh, pretty soon you're in the ring against Wilfredo Benitez, yes. who was still at the height of his game. Plus, I understand he uh, eventually was your brother-in-law. Did he become your brother-in-law? No, How did that work no, out? I, that, that, that's, that's, that's not true. That's not true. He actually called my house one day, uh -huh. and my little sister, who he, was, he had hot for, he said, can I, can I, he, well, he didn't say it that clear. <laughs> 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 but I, I said, no, uh, no, no, casa. I made something up. <laughs> and uh, nothing ever happened. They never got together, but he did have hot for my little sister. Oh, so you really had some incentive to beat him up when you got in the ring with him then? I, you know, to be honest with you, I never thought about that. <laughs> Maybe the third left hook, I thought about that. But right. besides that, I never thought about that. We are talking to the great boxing <laughs> Hall of Famer, Sugar Ray Leonard. Ray, you fought in one of the classic eras of boxing, man, and I, I could never forget it. Guys actually fought each other back then. When you were first approached about doing the uh, ESPN 30 for 30 No Moss, what were your initial thoughts, and uh, were there any reservations? There were a bit of trepidation. I, I, I thought to myself, you know, I can't go, you know, to Panama, where Roberto Duran is from. I just, for some reason, I went right back to, 
our first fight where Durant, where he wanted to fight mm-hmm. back in June of 1980, and how bad he was, how nasty he was, and how vile he was. And then I thought about my second fight, the No Moss fight. And, but all those things, all those visions were rather clear. But to go to Panama, where he's from, where he's cherished, where he's uplifted, I didn't want to go there. But I wanted to close the chapter in the book. I wanted to just come to an agreement of what happened that that infamous day um, in New Orleans. And I went there. And I tell you, I had the best time. They treated me like I was a king. It was so special, the fans. Obviously, you guys didn't really like each other back then, but uh, has the relationship changed any at all? Oh, that's uh, an as understatement. You got older? Yeah. understatement. We, we, I hated the guy. And I don't say hate. Hate is a bad word. Mm-hmm. But we've come to respect each other. We're very civil, and we're friends. We're really f- friends. And um, the third fight that we had in, 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 uh, in Las Vegas, I mean, we were way past our prime, but, you know, we just did it because we could do it. Right. You admitted, a ton of respect for Duran. You know what, Ray? You admitted on that documentary that Duran, in that first fight, that he kind of got in your head. And I was surprised that you uh, admitted something like that. I mean, it took a real man, Sugar Ray Leonard, to admit that, you know, another guy is kind of like psyching you out going into that first fight. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, a, a guy, a, a man, especially a fighter, we we would only admit our I don't want to call it character defects, but what happened uh, the first fight he, he he took my heart he he got inside my head um, he really did he got into my head I mean he, he the things he did the gestures he made um, the, all those things combined along with the the significance of the event it was huge I've never been in a fight that big. Mm-hmm. And and it was global and it, yeah I admit I, I lost perspective I, I you know he took me out of my game plan. I gotta tell you ever since I followed you in Montreal Ray uh, you became a huge fan of yours and thought nobody could beat you but when you went pro and um, the first time there were two times when I was actually afraid for you Sugar Ray Leonard the first time the first Tommy Hearns fight because he just destroyed people oh I mean I saw what he did to Pepino uh, Cuevas. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to kill Ray Leonard, you know? <laughs> and then you come back five years later after you retire to fight marvelous Marvin Hagler, and I'm saying to myself, this man is crazy. Come oh, on, Ray. You know, but you weren't by yourself, man. My whole, my whole family thought I was crazy. I mean, no one said anything because I paid them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My brother, he told me afterwards, he said, Ray, I was so scared. I said, no, no way you could beat Hagler. First, I was smaller. Mm-hmm. I had in, I was, you know, inactivity of you know almost five years, and you know I I came from major surgery, um, a detached retina. I mean, all those things were indeed factors, and I understood why people felt that I had no chance. Right. But you know, I always believed I I'm I'm an optimist no matter what, and I believed if I could train the right way, get myself in the right frame of mind, I could beat that guy. And he, he, without question, was not easy. Hagler was a beast. He was a monster in the ring. Yeah, you hit him with everything you had in that fight. And um, the fight that even impressed me more than the Hagler fight, though, was the first Tommy Hearns fight. Oh, where, yes. When I remember, you know, the words of Angelo Dundee, come on, you, kid, you're blowing it. You're blowing it. You, I know, you know that's, and that was the value of Angelo Dundee. Mm-hmm. He, he said the right things. He said the right sound bites. He didn't, he didn't freak out. When his man was cut, hurt, whatever, he took his time. He was very poised, and he said, "You're blowing it, son. You're blowing it." He said it just the right way, with the right tone, not too much of a well, it was concern, I should say. Right. But uh, he was the best. Angelo Dundee was the best. God bless his soul. We're talking with Sugar Ray Leonard, boxing Hall of Famer, Olympic champion, world champion. Ray, the question everybody wants me to ask you, of course, uh, today's. Uh, reigning champion today's pound-for-pound pound best fighter, Floyd Mayweather. We can only speculate, but I would love to envision a battle between yourself and Money Mayweather. Um, your thoughts on how that fight would have turned out? You know, and Floyd Mayweather, I, I love him. I mean, I, I love, first of all, because I like a technician in the ring. I like a mm-hmm. guy 
who uses his head and and the ring is, and his his own attributes, speed and, and power and what have you. He is a complete fighter. He, without question, he's going to the Hall of Fame. Floyd Mayweather has broken every record, even his own records. And it's, you have to give him credit. No question about that. You And when he, his last fight, he fought this kid, uh, Canelo, I believe it was. Yes. And to me, um, that kid, he was like a student. And uh, Mayweather was the professor, the teacher. That kid uh, had no reason being in the ring. But then again, you know what? One punch could change the whole uh, platform, the whole subject. But Floyd Mayweather, without question, deserves. And I'm looking forward to him being in the Hall of Fame. No question about that. Yeah, he is great. Ray, how do you think Mayweather would have been in your era? Would he have been as dominant? Uh, how would he have done against the Durans, the Hearns, the Hags of well, the world? Well, no one. I mean, if you look, if you really think about it, no one was totally dominant over the other. Mm-hmm. I mean, the final four, which was, you know, Tommy Hearn, Marvin Hagler, Roberto Duran. I mean, although Duran, you got also, I mean, Duran fought everybody, but Duran was coming up from like one thirty-two. He was, you know, I think Duran was a lightweight, and coming up to one my weight, one forty-seven welts weight, to middleweight, which is Hagler. I mean, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. That's you know, you got to bring your A game and an extra A game to compete in, in my era. We've seen so much change over the years, Ray Leonard. In boxing, we've lost some of the great ones. You mentioned Angelo Dundee, uh, Joe Frazier, Kenny Norton. The golden days of boxing, as I like to call it. Will those days ever come again, in your estimate? You know, you know like estimation? we talked earlier, mm-hmm. I, I'm an optimist. And, I, and, for, and for the sake of my sport, you know, which I totally love and support, and I am somewhat the of unofficial, official boxing ambassador, uh, it will come back. It will, But what it takes is more amateur fights. It, these kids need to have more experience. Um, the the Golden Gloves was a big amateur tournament, and when I was fighting, mm-hmm. it, and when when Ali was fighting I me, mean, I mean for as long as I can remember, the Golden Gloves, man, that's major. That's a major accomplishment. And the, even the Olympics, the Olympics now is shown now, you know, second tier. You know, it's not it's not as broadcast as as lively as it was back when I was fighting. Also, I had Howard Cosell, who, who could oh. you know, talk a bit. Yeah, the great Howard. The awesome. great Howard Cosell. Yes, sir. And you know what, Ray? I got to tell you something, man. He he definitely did help, uh, you know, oh. America just fell in love with you. You know, and that's how you became a household name, a household face. And uh, you guys kind of, your relationship was very reminiscent of the relationship Cosell shared with Muhammad Ali. It, it really but you know what? It wasn't put on I me. Mean, I, I love Howard. Howard loved me. We were friends, really real friends. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had conversations with each, each other, disagreements with each other. And uh, it was like Howard. But, you know, talking about boxing, amateur boxing, it was then where people people got a chance to know me or, or know uh, whoever else, the other boxers, because we were always on television. We was on like Wild World of Sports. We were fighting USA versus Cuba, USA versus Russia, USA versus uh, Germany. It was always activity. Right. The champions for champions. That's that. That is what bothers me. I would love to see boxing get uh, back to those days. And uh, speaking of uh, of of boxing, Ray, really, you're one of the greatest fighters of all time. You beat Thomas Hearns. You beat. Marvin Hagley, you beat Durant. You beat them all. The great Ray Charles Lennon. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Tell us the one thing. I mean, not, not in the boxing. It could be anything now. No, I know what not. is this legendary boxing champion absolutely terrified of? Getting my teeth clean. <laughs> I swear to God. I'm so you know, back in the day, I used to get kind of not, <laughs> not totally put out, but. I think anesthesia, they, uh, they put me under a little bit. They had to knock you out to pull your teeth. Oh, well, my that's God. not so bad. Oh, man. I, I'm that and uh, I don't know. I, I guess that that's really the big one, you mm-hmm. know, going to the dentist. It just, you know. And I'm a hypochondriac anyway, but <laughs> the dentist ranks up there pretty, pretty damn high. Wow. Sugar Ray Leonard afraid to go to the dentist. Who knew? <laughs> I'm not afraid to say that. <laughs> 
Hey, let's talk about your foundation, Ray, and uh, what, what you got going on these days, man. I know you did a little bit of acting here and there, and uh, you, you, you're, you donated your time to so many different causes and charities. Uh, what are you up to these days? Well, I formed a, a foundation, Sugar Ray Leonard Foundation, and we, along with my wife, we've raised uh, awareness and raised funds for juvenile diabetes research. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, to answer the question why I got involved with juvenile diabetes, I don't really know because, you know, when I was fighting back in the day, I would go to uh, elementary schools, junior high schools, and high schools uh, of the of the um, city or state I was, you know, participating in, and just giving them time and just trying to give them some incentive that if I can make it, you can make it. But I've always given back, um, even with sexual child abuse, you know, being a survivor myself, I want to get the word out and and create uh, meetings like there is for Alcoholic Anonymous or, or for drug use. There has there should be the same um, platform for these young kids who we, who eventually become adults from sexual child abuse to understand ways to uh, um, get through that period. Gary Lennon and of course legendary Roberto Duran. Hey, Ray, man, thanks for joining us. You are a knockout, my friend. My pleasure, man. Sugar Ray Leonard, boxing legend, Hall of Famer. What a great guy, man. Fun conversation right there. We'll be back, though, with more of your calls and thoughts on what Sugar Ray had to say right after this.